These were kind of popular. I, I don't see them too much lately, but it's a slack line. So the idea is to take a, a thick, it's like a thick, it's not a rope. It's like a, it's like a strap. It's usually like a strap. Uh, and you, you tie between two street trees or something like that. And then you stand on it and then you, you say, Hey, look, I'm cool. And it is fun. And it's good exercise actually. Uh, it's not too high off the ground. Uh, but, but you can see that there will be some bend in the line. And the question is if, if a human stands on there with a mass of 81 kilograms, so there's my human, that's a human. And the, the slack line makes a five degree angle with respect to the horizontal. What's the tension in the slack line? Uh, so let's calculate that. Uh, we're going to start off with a force diagram. So here's my human. And we think about what forces are acting on the human. Well, I have, I have two, right? I have long range and contact forces. And so the long range force I have is the gravitational force pulling straight down. And that would be M G where G is the gravitational field on the surface of the earth. It has a value of zero, negative 9.80 newtons per kilogram, newtons per kilogram. Now, other than that, what contact forces do I have on the person? What's touching the person? And the answer is the rope. Okay, but the, but the rope actually pulls in, in two ways, right? We have, we can think of this as two ropes, one rope pulling that way and one rope pulling that way. So let's write that as two different ropes, lines, ropes, I don't know. Uh, so let's put a line right there and we'll call this T1 and we'll call this one T2. And there's nothing else touching the person. So if, if the person's stationary and at rest, then I can say the net force acting on the person is equal to the zero vector. This is how we define equilibrium. Now what about tension? Uh, one of the things about strings and ropes and slack lines is that in an ideal situation where the mass of the rope itself is negligible and there's no frictional forces on the contact point, then the magnitude of the tension at different points has to be the same. So that means that the magnitude of T2, the tension pulling to the left, the magnitude has to be equal to the magnitude of T1. Of course, they can't be the same force because one pulls up and to the left, one pulls up and to the right, and so they, they can't be the same. But the magnitude is the same. And so we could just call this T. The magnitude is T. Okay, now if um, the net force is zero, then I actually can write this as two equations. I can say F net in the X direction is zero as a scalar equation, and F net in the Y direction as a scalar equation is zero. But if I do that, I have to know which way my X and Y directions are. So I'm actually gonna pick this is my x direction and this is my y direction. So now uh, I can do these equations. Let's go ahead and do the f net x. So uh, what forces, I have three forces, which of these forces act in the x direction? Well, t1 and t2 both have a component in the x direction. So if I look at this, this is my, I'll call that t1x and this is t1y, right, the y component. And then over here, I have T2x, T2y. And that angle is theta of five degrees. It's a right triangle. So if I take the, the cosine of theta, I get T1x over T. So the x component of this, if I say F net, I can say F net x, it's going to be equal to the x component of T1, which is going to be T cosine theta because cosine theta is uh, t1x over t remember that whole side is t and then if i solve for tx i get t1x i get t cosine theta now what about this one over here well it has the same magnitude and the, the same angle if it has and i'm going to show you it has to have the same angle okay uh, then i can write this as minus t cosine theta and so this one's minus because it's in the negative x direction. And here you see that if, if the magnitude of the tension is the same, the only way for these two forces, that's the only two forces in the x direction, the only way for these two forces to add up to zero is if the angles are the same. 
The angles have to be the same. In this case, the angles have to be the same. The only way for those to add up to zero. And so, but then I get t cosine theta equals t cosine theta, and I can't solve that for t because this is one equals one, and, and that is true, right? Just not useful. Okay, let's look at the y equation then. So f net y. So what forces do I have in the y direction? Well, I have a component of t1, and that's going to be t times the sine of that angle because this is the opposite side. So it's going to be t sine theta. Over here, this one has a y component too. It's also going to be t sine theta plus t sine theta. So you notice that over here, one of them was minus and one was plus uh, because they're pulling in opposite directions, but they're both pulling up. So they both have a positive y component. And then I have the downward uh, gravitation force is in the y direction, mg equals zero. And so I put minus mg because here we're saying g is the magnitude of that gravitational field of 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So now can I solve this for t? Yeah, I can. Because here I have t sine theta plus t sine theta. That's 2t sine theta. And then minus mg. Now I can add mg to both sides, and I get 2t sine theta equals mg. And then I can divide both sides by 2 sine theta, and I get t equals mg over 2 sine theta. Okay, so let's put in a value there. t equals 81 kilograms, 9.8 newtons per kilogram, 2 sine of 5 degrees. So I'm going to use my handy dandy calculator. Uh, so I'm going to just enter this in. 81 times 9.8 divided by parentheses 2, right? Because I want to divide by 2 and this times sine. And you'll notice my calculator is in degrees mode. Sine of 5. Close parentheses, enter. And I get 4554, four, let's say, 4554 five, four newtons. And, and just as a comparison, if this is uh, an 81 kilogram person, uh, 81 times 9.8 is 793. So that's the weight, oops, I'm sorry, you can't even see that. 81 kilogram person has a weight a gravitational force of 793. So down here, this is much higher, right? The tension in the line is not the tension in the weight of the person. It's much higher than that. What would happen if I decrease this angle to four degrees? What's going to happen to the tension? Let's because what if I, I'm like that's not slack line. Five degrees is too high of an angle. I want it tight. I want it sh uh, lower angle. Let's just decrease that to four degrees. I can do that up here by just recalculating. I'm going to put in four instead of uh, five. So I'm going to say 81 times 9.8 divided by parentheses 2 times sine 4, close parentheses, close parentheses, enter. And I get 5689. So I increased by over 1,000 newtons just by decreasing that, that degree to by, by one degree. Okay. Uh, you know, is it possible? Is it possible to have a completely straight line? And the answer is no. If it's completely straight, then there's going to be no vertical component of the tension. And so then it won't balance out this gravitational force. There's no way for the force to add up to zero if there's not a y component of the tensions. Can it be really, really small? Yes, it can be really, really small. But it can't be, it can't be zero. If it gets really, really small, the, the magnitude of the tension goes ginormous. That's a physics term, ginormous. Okay. And you can play around with that. You can say, what if I change it to 3 degrees, 2 degrees, 1 degree? Uh, let's just do 1 degree just for fun. Clear. So I get 81 times 9.8 divided by parentheses 2 times sine of 1. I get uh, 22,000 newtons. Is that right? Like it's hard to see the glare. 1, 2, 3. Yeah, 22,000 newtons. So, so big large tensions, probably going to break this, this strap or pull that tree over. That'd be bad. Okay, have fun slacklining.